It was just another ordinary day. The day was May 5th, 1989. I was 16 years old and I was quite a bit thinner and quite a bit hairier at that time. It was a Friday afternoon, just like any other Friday afternoon uh, during my early years of my high school career in Southern California. As usual, the bus dropped me off, nothing extraordinary there, and I had to make the nearly uh, two mile walk home, literally was two mile, I know that's an old man uh, tale. It wasn't in the snow. We were in Southern California, but it was about two miles. And right before I got to my front door, I was met by my sister Jackie. And my sister asked me, did, did you hear the news? And I said, no, I hadn't heard. And she said, well, I have a proclamation for you. And she gave me some extraordinary news. I was moving. I was, uh, due to a series of events, I was going to move from Southern California to Northern California, and her proclamation came to pass. She told me on a Friday afternoon that I was moving to Northern California, and by Tuesday morning, I was a resident of Sunnyvale, California. And that move was the best thing that happened to me, because two months after I moved there, I met Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Fourteen months after that, I would go on to meet the future Mrs. Patrick Davis. Yeah. And she and Jesus conspired to turn my life right side up. <laughs> it was an extraordinary piece of news that I got at the end of a very ordinary day. Has that ever happened to you? Where you... Well, the day just seemed to be a normal day, and all of a sudden something happens that's extraordinary. Maybe you were at work and your boss just said, hey, here's a Christmas bonus for you. And you didn't see that coming. Some of you wish you going to work home next day. I wish that happens, Pastor, yes. Maybe you, you guys went out to the beach as you normally do, nothing extraordinary there, but all of a sudden he gets down on one knee and he proposes. Maybe after a hard day's work, you came home after an average day, and your wife tells you news that will change your life forever. You're going to be a daddy. It, it starts off as a regular, ordinary day, but something extraordinary happens. That's exactly what happens with the shepherds in Luke's tale of Jesus' birth. Luke's gospel says this in Chapter 2, verse 8, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. It was just an ordinary night. The sky looked as it always did. The breeze on their skin felt uh, not unusual at all. The ground where they were standing or laying was the same rich, fertile fields that they've always experienced. It's just another night. It was just an ordinary flock of sheep. They bleated like ordinary sheep. They were dirty like ordinary sheep. They were smelly like ordinary sheep. Maybe they were temple sheep, but other than that, nothing abnormal about these sheep. These were just ordinary shepherds doing an ordinary job on an ordinary night. But all of a sudden, what began as an ordinary night turned into something extraordinary. Verse 9 tells us, And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. You see, God has done this kind of thing before where he's interrupted somebody going about their daily life to show them something extraordinary. He did this to Moses when Moses is going about his daily average life, and all of a sudden Moses sees a, a very curious sight. God manifested his presence in the form of a burning bush, and yet the bush wasn't consumed. We see God do that with Gideon when he's threshing the wheat, another common day. And an angel of the Lord shows up and says, Yahweh be with you. 
He does this with Zechariah, who's going about performing his normal uh, priestly duties, when all of a sudden an angel shows up and says, you're going to be a daddy, and the boy that you're going to birth is going to be the cousin to Jesus, and he will be John the baptizer, and he would eventually, eventually baptize Jesus himself. And here, the angel appears with normal, ordinary shepherds carrying out their normal work. And in verse 10 it says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You'll, you'll find the baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace to those who find favor in him. This is quite an extraordinary turn of events, isn't it? The Messiah, the King, the long-awaited anointed one has been born. Of this particular king, Isaiah, years ago, the ancient prophet Isaiah would write this, For to us a child is born and to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. They will call his name Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. In the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This had turned into truly an extraordinary night. But the shepherds, they have a choice to make here. The angels have come, the angels have made their proclamation, and now the angels are gone, and they've got a choice to make. They could just stay and return to the ordinary sky the ordinary pasture, the ordinary sheep, and their ordinary lives. Or they could respond to the extraordinary news that they just received. What would they do? Luke's gospel continues in verse 15. He says, And when the angels left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Oh, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us. And so they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Instead of returning to the ordinary, they responded to the extraordinary. They were no longer just ordinary shepherds. They were shepherds who bore in them the news of extraordinary events. It's possible that we came into this place today with what we might call an ordinary life. Patrick, I, I just have an ordinary job. I, I'm just a banker. I'm just a nurse. I'm just a, a student pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, having an ordinary retirement. We might have come here with an ordinary family. I, I'm just the oldest. I'm just the middle. I'm just the youngest. Oh, me? I, I just have an ordinary family, and we do ordinary things. We're come, we've come in here and we've had an ordinary night. Oh, we've not done anything special. We just hung out. We do what we've always done. We just went and had dinner with our family. And now we've come here and we're, we're sitting through another Christmas Eve story. Nothing out of the ordinary there. But the news of Jesus' birth, no matter how many times you've read it or heard it, is by no means ordinary. <laughs> this news of Jesus' birth is still extraordinary news. A Savior is born in the earth. There's peace for all of mankind. The angel said that this news will still bring great joy to all who hear it. 
It's still extraordinary news. And so the question becomes, what will you do? Will you return to an ordinary night and an ordinary life? Or will you respond to this extraordinary news? Beloved, I urge you to respond to this extraordinary news. I, I urge you today to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Did you know that Jesus came to save sinners? Jesus came to save. Jesus came to invite us into a loving relationship with him. Jesus came to teach us how to live a life that honors God and blesses one another. Oh, I urge you to reprioritize the extraordinary by placing Jesus at the center of your life again. By prioritizing prayer and the reading and meditation of sacred scripture as a daily practice, I urge you to reach out with this extraordinary news. Like the shepherd says, we should take this news that it calls great joy everywhere we go. But what will you do? Will you go out of these doors and the return to your ordinary life, or will you respond to the extraordinary? Beloved, this evening I encourage you, respond, respond, respond. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we give you the glory and praise today. We don't miss what this is about. Yeah, we, we came in here, and it's a beautiful time. And this so-called Christmas spirit is all around. But God, we move everything out of the way. And even right now, we prioritize your presence in our life. Right now, we kick out the renters in our, our, our mind space, and we, f we flood our thoughts with the celebration of your coming into the earth. Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for saving sinners. Thank you for taking my ordinary life and making it extraordinary to you. In Jesus' name, amen.